Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, May 22nd through Sunday, May 28th, 2017. But before we get into the reading, I wanted to make a short video to let everyone know an update of what is going on in my life. A lot of you already are aware that on Saturday, May 13th, in the early morning hours of Saturday morning between 1 and 1.30 a.m., uh, I woke up to uh, smoke that has filled the building and there was a fire in the building where I lived. Now, I was the one that called 911 and I got myself and my cat Gemini and all of the other residents actually also were evacuated um, by the firefighters after they arrived. So a lot of you, again, have been giving me messages on Facebook or on Skype or email or text asking if I'm okay and where I'm at and if I've been able to go back home. So I wanted to, I thought this was the easiest way to let everyone know at the same time um, because I have such an outpouring of support from you all, it would be really hard for me to try to get back with each and every one of you personally. So I wanted to let you all know that yes, I am safe again. My cat is safe. <laughs> um, I have not been able to get back into my place since the fire has occurred and actually I've been what they call displaced because of it. There's been a tremendous amount of smoke damage and although the fire originated below me and didn't actually burn up anything per se in my apartment, the smoke damage was so extensive that um, all my clothing, coats, shoes, bed, bedding, towels, furniture, books, teaching manuals, paperwork, client files, anything of that nature will probably have to be replaced. So in essence, um, it looks like I'm starting anew. Sorry about that. It's pretty windy out here today. It's a time of transformation and change uh, for sure. Uh, no, I didn't have renter's insurance. Some of you have asked me that. So yes, I'm pretty much starting from scratch, but I look at this as a blessing that I was woken up pretty much by my cat, actually, as she was stirring and couldn't get herself to sleep. It woke me up around 1 or 1.30 in the morning so that I was able to recognize what was happening and going on in the building. And so I was able to call 911 and therefore the firemen got everyone else out of the building and all their pets as well safely. Um, I want to say a special thanks to a few people, um, although there's been such an outpouring, as I said, of love and support. Uh, a few people I want to say a special thanks to. My friend and soul sister, Laura, who has, on my behalf, created a GoFundMe page, um, which will be at the link below in the description box of the video. Um, for people, if you feel so guided to send some donations so that I can start the process of looking for a new place to live and to replace uh, some of these items that I have lost. I want to say thank you to my soul sister and friend Kintla and her husband Sam who has been such a great uh, support and a massive amount of assistance for me especially with uh, in regards to uh, speaking with some of the authorities as far as what's going on. Uh, thank you so much to Patricia who the day or so after uh, this occurred, she called me while I was uh, in a hotel. Um, thank you to the Red Cross for actually putting me up in a hotel for a couple of days. But thank you to Patricia, Patricia who actually took me shopping when I was in a state of shock for some of the essentials that I needed. Um, bathroom items, food, and, and such. I want to say a special thank you to my friend Deborah, who offered me the use of her office space so that I can continue doing client work um, for a few weeks. She's offered that to me free of charge. So I am still up and running. I am still doing readings. Um, I'm still doing my client appointments, just so that you all know that. And a very special thank you to Susan, 
one of my friends and Reiki students who asked me or invited me to stay in her home uh, for as long as I need while I am trying to figure out what the next step is. So this is her beautiful backyard. It's a beautiful day, a little windy, so I hope you can hear me okay. And I hope I've mentioned uh, everyone specifically by, main, by name, but I want to also thank everyone, everyone, all of my Facebook friends, all of my friends in the area, people that I've taught, people that I've known, um, for all of your prayers, for um, your love, your concern, your support, and thank you for all of you also that have sent uh, in donations in the way of food or clothing or monetary donations, again, through the GoFundMe page and for sharing the GoFundMe page. I think it's been shared over 150 times now. Um, and I really am grateful and thankful for everyone who has assisted me in starting over. Um, yes, this is a hard thing. And I know a lot of you out there go through hard things and, and I help you, I help some of you through those hard things through my guidance and reading, readings and uh, healings and teachings. So now I have to take my own advice. I have to listen to the same words that I tell all of you when hard times occur for you. And uh, I will make it. And it's something that uh, definitely is life changing. So. I send all of you much love and light. Enjoy the weekly reading. Again, remember, I am still taking uh, client appointments and actually welcome those client appointments um, as even more so than I ever have. So thank you all very much. I love you all very much. Namaste. Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, May 22nd through Sunday, May 28th, 2017. For this week's weekly reading, we're going to be using Doreen Virtue's Fairy Tarot Deck for the main message for everyone. And for your special message card, depending on your stone of choice, we're going to be using the Archangel Tarot, or excuse me, the Archangel Divination Deck, which is also by Doreen Virtue. So let's start by showing you your stones of choice so you can get an idea which message is for you. So with the limited choices of stones I have, actually the three stones that we have today are three stones that were given to me by three of my Reiki Master students over this past weekend. And these are the only stones right now that I have access to uh, because of the situation that I mentioned in the beginning uh, portion of this video. So this one right here is actually raw garnet in what appears to be a matrix of quartz and pyrite. And you can see these little red splotches, the little red dots here, if you can see that very well. And you can also see the sparkly quartz and pyrite in there when I kind of move the the stone around. But the garnet, of course, is going to be a heart chakra energy. And that um, garnet is a deep red. So we're talking about emotional healing and cleansing of the heart chakra, healing old emotional wounds. Um, this can even relate to relationship matters and healing of matters of the heart uh, with significant others in our lives. And of course, that quartz in there that uh, sparkly quartz and even the pyrite the pyrite is very grounding but the quartz is very high vibrational so it's interesting because you have this mix of the high vibrational quartz opening up the crown chakra energies you have that pyrite which is a very heavy stone and it kind of grounds you and then you have the um, garnet which is again associated with the heart chakra this second stone of choice, again, given, by, given to me by one of my uh, Reiki Mastership students, this is called Stillbite. And Stillbite, this is a very creative stone. It helps to open your intuition. Um, it helps to open up your third eye and crown chakra as well. It actually grounds spiritual energy. It aids in spiritual journeying. Um, 
and it's actually a potent detoxifier. Okay, so again, this is still bite. And your last stone of choice is a nice, beautiful piece of raw rose quartz. So this is, again, for me, a brand new piece of raw rose quartz. And the rose quartz has got a very peaceful, calming energy to it, okay? It, again, associates with the heart chakra, but this is more about self-love and self-nurturing, uh, self-healing of that heart chakra, um, rather than some of those other heart chakra stones that can be healing of more relationships uh, etc. They, they all work on clearing the heart chakra, but the rose quartz has that, again, that very nice, peaceful, calming, gentle. It's a very gentle uh, stone and um, very soft kind of energy and loving. Okay, so again, you have that garnet in the um, pyrite and the quartz. You have the stillbite, and then you have the rose quartz. So let's start by talking about the astrology for the week. There's not a lot going on this week, but we have a new moon. So let's start with the first day where there's something significant happening. That's Thursday the 25th. And we begin Thursday the 25th with Venus squaring Pluto. Now, you may very well feel this the day or two before, so as early as Tuesday, maybe even before that. Because Venus rule, Venus is a faster-moving planet, it rules love, relationships, it rules money, finances, and it rules our sense of self-worth or how we value ourselves or our values in general. And it's challenging Pluto, and Pluto is that planet of death and rebirth and transformation and change and really kind of getting down there into the deep recesses of the subconscious. So there's a potential here with... Um, changes on a deep inner subconscious level in regards to relationships and in regards to finances. There is um, probably a possibility of going in and healing old emotional wounds or how we, again how we value ourselves, how worthy and deserving we feel that we are in regards to transforming our lives and bringing in the blessings that we're looking for. This could bring in some transformation of relationship matters uh, in a heavy-duty way. Kind of uh, that Pluto energy is about death and rebirth a lot of the times, and so it can really bring this, this aspect of death and rebirth to um, some of those different circumstances with partnerships, um, money and finance, and our possessions. Venus kind of rules our possessions as well. Then also, later on Thursday, that's when we have the new moon in Gemini. So just for a minute before we talk about the new moon in Gemini, that means that the, la the last couple days of Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of a day of Thursday, if you're in the Eastern Time Zone in the United States, is the dark of the moon phase. And whenever we have that dark of the moon phase, right before a new moon, it is a time of clearing and cleansing. So, you know, that Venus square Pluto will be especially potent for this cleansing, purging, kind of purifying aspect of the dark of the moon phase. And then the new moon is at four degrees Gemini. Now, Gemini is a very uh, social sign. It's about communication. It's about messages. Um, it's an air sign. So it rules all forms of communication, speaking, writing, teaching, sharing information, um, meetings, brainstorming. You know, it's a very mental sign in the way of ideas and inspirations. So this new moon, a new beginning, is going to be in relation to all of these aspects of information and communication. Then we jump ahead to Sunday the 28th. And now, Sunday the 28th, Mars is approaching an opposition to Saturn. Mars is in Gemini right now, and Saturn is in Sagittarius, the opposite sign. It doesn't become exact until the wee early morning hours of Monday, but most of us that are going to be um, experiencing that, depending on what part of the world you're in, a lot of us are going to be sleeping at that time. So that's why I'm talking about it as far as Sunday. It will be approaching and you will feel it. So Gemini, Mars and Gemini, Gemini is a mutable sign, changeable energy, not grounded energy. Saturn in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a mutable sign. Again, not very grounded energy. They're opposing one another, so they're bouncing their energies back and forth off of one another. So we might feel more of the, the Mars and Gemini, then we might feel more of the Saturn and Sagittarius. This is going to be 
I, th I feel like it's going to be a lot of um, stop start energy and that's what I feel like because Mars is the planet of energy and action it rules our physical energy as well as taking action on things and because both of these planets are in mutable signs, I feel like it's going to be, oh, let's, let's go and do this. Oh, no, let's go over here and do that. Oh, I'm multitasking and I'm juggling all five projects at the same time or, or I'm having to do a lot of things at the same time or wear many hats. So I feel like there's going to be just a lot going on and it's almost like we're juggling things and it's like stop, start, you know, uh, take action. Oh, no, maybe we need to go over here. So it's not a very grounded energy. Um, it can give us options though. I feel like Mars and Gemini opposing Saturn and Sagittarius is something where we have a lot of options or choices. So the trick is, is being grounded enough. And how do we be grounded? We be grounded by meditating, uh, getting out in nature, standing barefoot on the earth, hugging a tree, whatever you need to do to be grounded. Um, that might help to kind of weed through all these different options or opportunities that might be coming in. Also on Sunday the 28th, the moon will be in the water sign of Cancer. That's actually the ruling sign for the moon. And of course the moon is about our emotions and feelings. And I mentioned the moon on this day because it's going to be connecting with a lot of different planets in a lot of different ways. First, the moon in Cancer will challenge or create a square aspect to Jupiter which is in Libra right now. Jupiter's about our belief systems. Then it's going to make a positive connection to Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune is the planet of spirituality. Um, so, you know, that's going to bring in a nice kind of intuitive quality to it. Intuition and our healing abilities, meditation abilities, imagination abilities with Moon, Neptune are very high. Um, as opposed to that Moon, Jupiter, where we might feel a little challenged by our emotions and our belief systems. And a lot of times our belief systems are more of a mental thing, right? And so our emotions or our heart might be in one direction and maybe our belief systems or logic uh, might dictate something else. That it can also be in regards to relationship matters since Jupiter is in the sign of Libra. Okay, so then the moon moves on and it makes a sextile to Mercury, which is actually a positive aspect. It's an aspect of opportunity. So I feel like there's a potential for some positive communication or a positive message coming in because Mercury rules messages and information. Then the moon will oppose Pluto, emotional transformation that happens probably uh, with other people. So like within our relationships to other people or with groups and organizations with other people. It could be with coworkers, with your job. Because of that opposition, it's kind of a reflective thing. So even though the moon is about our emotions, it's reflecting to Pluto and bringing in this idea of transformation from an outside source. Then the moon is going to challenge Venus, okay? And um, then it goes on to finally challenge Uranus. So Venus and Uranus are in the sign of Aries and uh, it's kind of completing that um, Venus square Pluto that we talked about on Thursday with the moon squaring both Venus and Uranus. That could bring some sudden unexpected emotional uh, outburst of some sort. Like somebody's been holding on to maybe feelings that needed to be expressed and then all of a sudden they can't hold on to it anymore and it kind of comes out. That's the Uranus effect. Uranus is that quick and sudden expression, you know, can't hold back. It's that lightning bolt of energy. And because the moon is in Cancer, it's going to be, again, this emotional thing. Because Venus is there, again, it might bring in relationships. So, again, that seems to be an important uh, time period and just a few days after the new moon. So, it's, again, something new is being birthed and sometimes when that new birth is occurring, there's still this tying up of loose ends of some old stuff, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the first card, and I meditated and chose the cards. And I used the fairy tarot deck this week because of that new moon in Gemini, because Gemini to me is very kind of fairy-like energy. So let's go ahead and see what the first card is. Okay, so I'm going to read it first, and then I'll show you the card. Five of Autumn is what it is, which is like the five of Earth. And it says, reach out to others for assistance, poor timing for a career change, feeling challenged by money issues, okay? So this is the card. And a lot of times, you know, all of those fives, whether it's the five of 
uh, earth or air or water or fire, the fives are not a very grounded energy. It's kind of about a chaotic sort of energy, confusing energy, too many things happening at once, um, feeling challenged in some way. So this is challenged in the way of the practical matters of life because it's the autumn card which relates to the earth element. So this can be about career, money, finances, projects, you know, things that we're working on. So uh, this kind of confusion and chaotic energy is going to be in regards to uh, some of those, again, more practical, earthy matters. And that seems to be maybe the beginning of the week or maybe it carries through through the whole week. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second card and see what further information we get that can maybe give us more, uh, more of an idea of how that's going to play out. Okay, so this is positive. We have the Major Arcana number three, the Empress card. It says, time to take action, the power of creativity, success that allows for a life of luxury. So the Empress card is the card of a new birth. The Empress card is usually shown in the tarot deck as a woman who's pregnant and ready to give birth. So again, we have that new moon, new beginnings, new birth that's happening this week. So this is in relation to that new moon, and it follows that five of autumn card. So I, I like that because that means that there's something positive coming. There's something positive that's about to be born and that's in the works, and that we shouldn't get too stuck in any kind of depression, fear, or anxiety from what's going on here um, in the beginning of the week or throughout the week. So get ready for something new, new to be coming. The Empress is also about that mothering, nurturing kind of quality or energy. So make sure that you're not just mothering and nurturing and, and helping or caretaking other people, but that you're also doing that within yourself as well. Let me see if there's anything else that I want to say here. You know, if you, if you take a look at the imagery, First of all, there's a lot of green, so this is heart chakra energy, so there's a healing taking place on the emotional level, but also if you can see her face here, she looks very happy, she looks very pleased, you know, there's a lot of sparkly energy around her. So again, I feel like there's something very positive and good that's about to happen, so whatever's going on in your life, hang in there and it's going to be okay. And then the third card, when I pulled out the third card, actually two cards came out, and I asked Spirit if both cards needed to be looked at, and Spirit said yes. So let's take a look at that first of the third cards. It's the Princess of Winter, and it says inquisitive, truthful, realistic, undiplomatic. It says information that can help you, but which may also be difficult to hear. Speaking the truth with kindness, an indigo child or adult. So the Princess of Winter is the page of swords in the traditional tarot and the pages are always the messengers they bring in some sort of messages and with this one being the air suit winter um, is going to be the air suit here this is bringing in challenges on the mental realm so i feel like it is just as it says that you're going to get some sort of information that in some way shape or form is going to end up being helpful, but as you hear it in the moment, it might be really hard to hear or really challenging to hear. So, but again, that Empress card indicates some sort of new birth. Sometimes when we have a new birth in our life, it's difficult because we don't want to let go of the old. And sometimes the old needs to be let go of, as I'm well aware. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we hear something that's going to, again, help us to move forward into a new direction. but it's difficult to hear because that means we have to start something new. You know, that means we have to let go of something old and let it fall away so that we can move towards something new. Let's take a look at the last card. Let's hope that it's really wonderful. Okay. It is really wonderful. Major Arcana number 10, the Wheel of Fortune. This is wonderful. I love this. Delays are over. Sudden or unexpected good luck. A new car or travel. I would like a new car and travel. Anyway, so the Wheel of Fortune. So, you know, the Wheel of Fortune is spinning. There's a karmic shift in our circumstances. You know, this along with the new birth of the new moon in Gemini and the Empress card here, this is indicating something good is taking place. Again, we're moving away from something old. The wheel turns and we have to let go of something old, something that's worn out, something that's not working anymore. And that means when the wheel turns, there's some new energy coming in, something new about to take place. 
And just as it says, delays are over, sudden or unexpected good luck. So again, this is a positive week, but it's intermingled with some challenges with that five of autumn and with that princess of winter. It's going to be, you know, ups and downs. The interesting thing is, is that the two challenging cards, the five of earth and the princess of air, those are like everyday details of life. And, it, it, you know, dealing with everyday details of life can be quite challenging. And the two positive cards here, the Empress and the Wheel of Fortune, they're major arcana. And whenever you have a lot of major arcana in a reading, or in this case, two major arcana, we're talking about something important that the soul needs to go through for its own evolution and growth, for the changes that the soul needs to go through to get to the next step on the path. So it's very much about soul journey, and it's about the soul's journey, okay? The major arcana about the soul's journey and moving into a, a new level, a higher level, you know, birthing something new on a soul level. So it's very important um, from the spiritual perspective, but a very, very, again, a very positive reading. Now let's go ahead and see what your special message card is depending on your stone of choice. So for those of you that chose the garnet in the matrix of pyrite and quartz, and again we have the archangel deck here, and we're just going to give it a shuffle and ask, ask to be shown what's the special message. Okay, this one I want to pull. For you, moon cycles. Interesting. So, new moon in Gemini this week, and this is the card Moon Cycles with Archangel Haniel. Notice how the moon affects your energy and manifestations and capitalize upon these cycles. Okay? So, this is telling me that this new moon is important for you, but I think even beyond the new moon, probably the next full moon is also going to be important for you. So, pay attention to what signs of the zodiac the new moon and the full moons are in maybe for the next couple of months and if it connects with anything specifically in your chart as far as planets in your chart your sun sign does it connect with the ascendant or the midheaven um, and if you don't know what these things are then you might want to think about contacting an astrologer and and having a, a reading to see if there's any importance there with your chart and these moon cycles this is also, again, indicating that you might be especially emotionally sensitive uh, in this week for some reason. Um, the moon, maybe you're the type of person that the moon especially affects. Uh, cancer people being ruled by the moon, they're especially affected by the moon cycles because the moon moves so fast through the zodiac. And as it moves through all these different signs of the zodiac, their emotions are affected. So maybe even if you're not a cancer in this week, with what's going on astrologically, you might be especially affected by the movement of the moon and the emotions and, and the feelings that you're dealing with. Let me see if there's anything else here. Archangel Haniel, um, I feel like there's a message there specifically from her, and she's the archangel that assists us with getting in touch with our intuitions, our healing abilities, and even our subconscious patterns. Um, you know, deep within our soul. So there's something there also to, to pay attention to um, in this week for you. So for those of you that chose the still bite, okay, let's see what your special message is for still bite people. Asking to be shown, and this one's catching my eye. It says, hello from heaven, Archangel Azrael. Your loved ones in heaven are doing fine. Let go of worries and feel their loving blessings. So I feel like whether, you know, whether it's a friend or significant other or family member that maybe has passed over, um, they are letting you know that they are with you. They're supporting you. Um, there might be a special message coming from one of them for you. Maybe you'll have a dream about them where they come to you and give you that special message. Um, perhaps a lot of you, if you're very intuitive and feeling oriented, feel their presence and, and maybe you receive some sort of sign from them and you know that they're there. Now, others of you, maybe, maybe you would like to contact a medium of some sort and see if there is a special message from a, a loved one um, or an old lover or friend that can be helpful for you. I also feel like this can be about pets that have passed over as well. Um, this also could be an indication that 
there may be a time coming up that there will be something going on within a family, and this can be, again, whether it's your biological family or spiritual family, uh, as far as um, maybe they're getting ready to transition in some way. And Archangel Azrael comes in to bring comfort and guidance. Uh, he's kind of known as the counseling angel for those that are um, dealing with loss, uh, the loss of a, a family member through transition. And Archangel Azrael also helps with those that are transitioning as far as their comfort level and, and, and this idea about you know peace and, and being very peaceful. So there's some things going on there um, on both levels, but again, there's some sort of blessing in this for you as well. So um, don't hang on to any of the negatives, but focus on the positives and the blessings and the messages that are coming forth. All right, and then for those of you that chose the raw rose quartz, let's take a little shuffle here. This one's calling my name. Wow, that's a nice one, prosperity. This is with Archangel Ariel. Your material needs are provided as you follow your intuition and manifest your dreams into reality. This, you know, this one with Archangel Ariel, um, she reminds me uh, in this picture of another goddess whose name is Abundantia. And Abundantia is often shown holding a cornucopia like this with a lot of coins and, and uh, you know, which signifies the abundance and prosperity. So this could be in the form of a financial blessing or blessings that are coming in. Could be the abundance and prosperity is coming through support from other people in some other way, gifts from other people, opportunities, and it could be opportunities with, with your business or with your career, um, or you know, it could be an opportunity with in family situation um, or a moving situation. This could be just about anything, but this is definitely something that's um, a very positive indication that there's good things coming. And I'm just looking at all the gold in this card. She's surrounded by gold. She's kind of holding this cornucopia with gold coins in it. And, you know, that gold signifies um, the, sac uh, the solar plexus chakra. So it's also about being confident, courageous, and having um, a good sense of self-will and self-identity within <clears throat> the circumstances of your life with what's going on. So, okay. So thank you all for tuning in, and I send you many blessings of love and light, and thank you all for sharing and subscribing to the channel and sending your positive messages of love and light to me both um, with my YouTube videos and also with my Facebook posts. Thank you, thank you to all of you again for sending your love and light and support uh, towards me through um, whether it's your blessings or um, you know your gifts or again the donations with um, what's been happening in my life uh, to help me transition into my new beginning. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I send you so much love and light. So take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you again next week. Blessings.